Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kinichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jeb Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful Reading with Your Kids studios in the Reedville neighborhood of Boston. We are so happy that you're joining us today. Thank you so much for being part of our Reading with Your Kids family. We don't want you to miss an episode. That's why we encourage you to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, on Podbean, or wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is the author of No One Knows Source. Her name is Elaine Keeley Kearns. We are really excited that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Familius. Familius Publishing is a global trade publishing company that publishes books and other content to help families be happy. Familius believes that the family is a fundamental unit of society and that happy families are the foundation of a happy life. They recognize that every family looks different, and they passionately believe in helping all families find greater joy. To that end, they publish books for children and adults that invite families to live the familiar nine habits of happy family life. Love together, play together, learn together, work together, talk together, heal together, read together, eat together, and laugh together. Check out Familius.com and follow Familius Talk on Instagram to learn more about their great titles and stay up to date with all the latest releases. That's Familius.com, F-A-M-I-L-I-U-S.com, Familius.com. We're also very happy to be brought to you today by With the Courage of a Mouse. It is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Cat the Cat wants a home, family, and friends she can count on when she suddenly finds herself in Sweet Meadows, a long way from the alley she calls home. Cat discovers she can talk but can't decide if she's dreaming or dead. Simon, a mouse, is having the worst day ever. Instead of celebrating his first day at superhero school, he's on the breakfast menu twice. A hawk considered him as an easy meal, but quick thinking changed that. Now a cat wants to pounce. Not if Simon can help it. With a quick plan and matchstick, Simon speeds towards certain death. Will he arrive at superhero school? Join the entire superhero gang for their first adventure with the courage of a mouse. The Superhero School Series Book 1, a middle grade chapter book for ages 7 to 12, focusing on courage, friendship, and finding the superhero inside all of us. The series touches on common life themes and challenges with humor, patience, and self-improvement techniques. With the Courage of a Mouse is written by Donna Sager Cohen and can be found wherever books are sold. Joining us on the line right now from right outside of New York City in a very, very beautiful part of the world. Our guest is the author of the great picture book, No One Knows Source. She is also the driving force behind a really cool website. If you're not familiar with this website, you ought to be. It's called KidLit411.com. Please welcome to the show, Elaine Keeley Kearns. Elaine, how are you? I am good, Jed. Thank you. Thank you for having you're welcome. You know, we, we ha- were having such a nice chat before the uh, podcast began. The one thing I didn't check with Elaine about was to make sure that I was pronouncing her name right. Did I do it right? No, you no. didn't. <laughs> you did not, Jed. It is a very, very difficult name to pronounce, but it is actually Kylie with a long I. Okay, so Elaine Kylie Kearns. Correct. Good job. Excellent. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a discipline. I try real hard to make sure that I ask that question before every interview. But as regular listeners to the show will test, I often forget. And today I forgot. So, but you know, it, it, it gives the, uh, the audience a chance to hear your name a couple of times and that way they really learn it really sinks in. Absolutely. There you go. There you go. And if you believe that, I can get you a free pass over the GW bridge. Uh, (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) And and, and if folks aren't familiar with the New York City area, that free pass would actually be very valuable. That is a very expensive bridge to cross. Yes, it is. It is a very expensive pass. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, enough about my my botching names and and the, the tolls on the GWB. Tell us all about Noah Noahsaurus, please. All right. So Noah Noahsaurus is a story about a grumpy dinosaur who wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and is cheered up by his friends who do not give up on his grumpy mood. That is wonderful. Um, it, it, some, it, you know, I guess the first question that came to my mind is, aren't most dinosaurs grumpy? I mean, like they're so big and they lumber around and everything. I'd have to say not only are most dinosaurs grumpy, Jed, but I'd have to say that most humans are also <laughs> grumpy. <laughs> I think we all can relate a little bit to a dinosaur that just doesn't want to get moving in the morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. You, you know, any anybody who follows any of the Kidlet um, author uh, fan pages on on Facebook or any of those groups, it, it seems <laughs> like the the number one meme that is is on those groups are, are folks posting pictures of coffee trying to get going in the mornings. Oof, yes, I can totally <laughs> <like> that myself. <laughs> uh, so is, uh, is there a particular incident or a particular person in your life that uh, inspired you to create Noah Noah Source? As a matter of fact, although Noah is a young protagonist, I would have to say that the inspiration for Noah was actually my husband and not <laughs> children he has many rules for when he wakes up and one of them is don't talk to me (laughs) as opposed to my children who may be grumpy but they reluctantly will get out of bed and get moving Uh uh-huh and and do i dare ask how your husband feels about being portrayed as the grumpy dinosaur in your book well at first of course was a little reluctant uh, <laughs> to um, say that he was actually the inspiration for Noah Noahsaurus, but after um, serious thought, I guess, he, <laughs> he, he decided that it was okay and that it was something that everyone goes through. Mm-hmm. So he sacrificed himself for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate a, 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 a man who is uh, able to, to give up a little piece of his dignity for art. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it mild, mildly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the reaction been uh, to from from kids and uh, and adults when they're experiencing Noah Noah Sirs? I have to be honest, I was absolutely thrilled by the response that I have gotten so far. I've only done a couple of uh, school visits, but um, children seem to really enjoy the fact that throughout the book, Noah just pretty much says no. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can all relate to just saying no Mm -hmm. um, and not wanting to do the things that we need to do on a day-to-day basis. So I really have been thrilled and fortunate enough to experience the kids when they're yelling no, even if they haven't read the book prior to a school visit, by the end of the school visit and by the end of my uh, reading aloud, they are more than willing to shout no mm-hmm. when time uh, presents itself. Yeah, I guess there's, as you were saying, there there are a lot of people who are kind of fit that that grumpy mode, at least part you know part of their lives. Uh, when when things aren't going right or they're not feeling perfect and they they get that inertia and they don't really want to exert the effort to get get themselves out of bed or get themselves going, um, what kind of conversations do you think families can have when they're uh, after they're done having fun yelling no and uh, sitting down and talking about no and no source? Well, I think first of all, as a parent and as an educator, I am an elementary school teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's really important to acknowledge the fact that, you know, we're not always ready to face the day with a smile on our face. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it is okay to acknowledge the fact 
that we're going to wake up grumpy. And it's important to let children understand that that's okay. It's okay to feel like we don't want to do it. But it's also important to let them know that we don't give in to that feeling Mm -hmm. and that we, we, you know, plow ahead through our day and that maybe by the end of it, we're not feeling as terrible as we did in the beginning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, as, as, as a school teacher, my wife is a, uh, has been a school teacher for over 31 years in the, in the Boston public school system. What? And, uh, you know, we, we love to be empathetic to, to every kid's yeah. individual needs. But, you know, when that bell rings, you kind of got to get going and start learning. Yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> We can't just cave into our emotions all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, I mean, there's a time and a place where we need to self-soothe and take some time for self-care. But then there's also times when we need to say, you know what? I really need to get X, Y, and Z done. Mm-hmm. And what a better opportunity than, you know, when our children are young to say, I understand that you're feeling tired right now, but you know what? We still have a job to do. And we're not quitters. So we get through it um, with the support and love of the family. And, of course, I know the teachers are there to support once the kids get into the classroom. You know, you kind of bring up an an interesting question in my mind. We seem to, you know, our, our society kind of swings on a pendulum, you know. And, you know, when I was growing up, Close to a hundred years ago, um, <laughs> you didn't admit that, that you had emotions, especially little boys. It was like, you, know, you don't feel sad. Come on, get up and go. And 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 now, thankfully, we're a little, we're we're more sensitive, and and we encourage our both our, our kids to express their feelings and express their emotions. But it seems like in some cases we're going kind of way on the other side, where it's. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh, you're feeling terrible right now. Well, here, got, sit in the sit in the comfy seat. No one will bother you until you're ready to get things going. Um, is is there, it it it's kind of tough. Do you do you feel that kind of um, uh, struggle to kind of balance? You know, encouraging kids to be uh, aware of their emotions and express them, but also giving them the strength to kind of uh, you know get the job done, anyways. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we want to respect our children and say that, yeah, I understand that, you know, you're not feeling like you want to do something right now. But as a society, we really do need to keep going. Mm -hmm. I mean, if everyone caved into every emotion they were feeling, I mean, I know by, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, I don't feel like doing much. (laughs) Um, So if we just gave into that, we really wouldn't be productive as a society. Mm -hmm. And I think the nice thing about Noah, Noahsaurus, is the fact that although he's feeling kind of grumpy and he doesn't want to do it, His friends are there to support him and to show him, you know what, even though you may not feel like doing it, it'll be okay because we're there to support you and to get you through it as well. I guess that maybe that's the biggest difference from, again, when I was growing up to to now. Now we're more in a mode of instead of just insisting kids get up, suck it up and deal with it, it's like, hey – it's tough. We know it's tough, but we're here for you to support you. We we got to get through it, but we're here to help you get through it. Exactly, Jed. You're not alone. There is a support group. And, and just like in life, we always have a support group. I know as an educator, I have always wanted my students to feel that, yeah, you know what? No matter what happened with mom and dad that morning, when you come here, I- I'm here for you. I love you. I am the second tier of support for your emotions. And I think that children knowing that there's another safety, that it's not just an exclusive, just the family, Mm -hmm. that maybe, you know, it's easier to deal with the emotions when you know, like, okay, maybe mom's losing her, losing it right now and dad's not really in the mood. But when I get to school, I know that Mrs. Kearns is going to be there for me, and she gets it. Mm -hmm. So there's another layer of support for the children. Just like in the book, there's another layer 
for Noah. He's not interested in his family. He's not interested in the support that they are offering at the moment. You know what? He needs his friends. And sometimes that's what we need. We need another layer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of the great things that that I love to do in my educational magic shows is is when, when I'm asking, I ask kids what they're, what they're thankful for. And, uh, yeah. you know, I've, I've probably asked 30,000 kids over the years that this question and the vast majority, 99% of the kids always are saying something about a person in their life. And it's usually family. And I love, and there are schools that you can go into where it feels like family. Um, yeah. There are other schools you go into where it definitely does not feel like family. Right. But right. I, I really love it when I'm able to be in a school and a kid says, you know, I'm thankful for my family and just kind of celebrate the fact that, hey, isn't it great that this school feels like a family because we support each other, because we respect each other? Right. There's nothing more magical than that. Yeah. And I actually feel like that in my own life when a student will find me on social media from 10 years ago <laughs> and say something magical that happened that I perhaps may not remember, mm-hmm. but I know that I somehow influenced them in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I really am a big believer in the, it takes a village to raise a, a child. It really does. It yes. takes a village for that child to feel like they are worthy or that they are going to become something just simply awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I have to give it, a, take my hat off to you and to my wife and all the teachers out there because I, I don't think families quite understand the challenges that teachers face. I, they probably face them forever, but especially today, uh, there are kids coming to school f- with all sorts of not only learning issues, but emotional issues, family issues. Yeah. In my wife's school, they have an, an extraordinary number of of homeless kids in the school yeah. right now, and it's um, it it ain't it ain't teaching ain't like it used to be. No, it's not. It really is. I like to think of my teaching as a vocation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's definitely something that you do despite, you know, the paycheck. Mm -hmm. You're doing it because you just love the children and you want to reach them. Mm -hmm. And you want them to know that, you know, it's okay. Whatever you are, I love you. Mm -hmm. And, And, you know, I'm sure your wife feels the same way. It goes beyond, you know. The English and the grammar and the math, it's, it's, it's the whole child. And honestly, sometimes what we really, really wish to reach in our kids and our students is the emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really mind that, you know, we, we studied number of the stars and maybe my students don't remember, you know, the first, the last, you know, six chapters, but if they know that I love them, that's really where, where it's at for me. And I'm sure your wife is the same. I think most teachers feel that way. Most teachers want their students to know that no matter what, we love you. We yeah. really, really, really love you no matter what. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that's obvious is not only is teaching a vocation for you and not only do you love it, but you also love Kidlet and being a supporter of Kidlet is quite the vocation for you. Um, Kidlet 411 is an amazing site, I think, not only for uh, authors, it's, it's a great place for authors, for illustrators, but also for families to find great books to add to their family library. Thank you. Thank you. It's definitely have, has been a labor of love. Um, Sylvia Liu, who is my partner with mm-hmm. Kidlet 411, she has been, uh, she is my critique group member. I absolutely adore Sylvia. Um, we have been together since its inception and, um, it has really organically evolved as a labor of love. Um, it was our little way of giving back to the Kidlet community. Um, and, you know, we love it. We do it every week. We are so grateful for the authors that 
agree to do an interview. We have interviewed everyone from, you know, Tommy DePaulo to Drew Daywall to Jane Yolen, um, you know, really well known authors in Kidlet who have dedicated themselves um, to craft and have been gracious enough to do interviews with us when we were little teeny tiny nobodies that nobody really cared about. Um, it's been absolutely lovely. We do it every week. We do a an interview with an author. They may be up and coming. coming. Um, they may be uh, established. Uh, but, you know, we try to do our best um, to give back to the community that we love. And one thing that I absolutely adore, and it was a wonderful, wonderful surprise for me when I started the Reading With Your Kids podcast, is the there really is a community of kidlit authors out there. And it's a real community. Yeah. And the support that the authors give each other and the, the support that I've received and uh, you know, the, the, every author is like, you know, so encouraging to, to listeners to, yes, contact me. If your kid has a question, send me an email. Have your kids send me an email. Have them send me a, a note. I love to communicate to, with my listeners. And this is for everyone, every, you know, for, for the, you know, the, 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 the first time indie author to, you know, the well established authors that we've had on. And, and, and so I, I love that. I love that not only as somebody who's, you know, functioning in that kid lit world, but I also love it. Um, knowing, you know, as, as a, someone who, who purchases kid lit and, and who has purchased a ton of it when my kids were, were babies, uh, <laughs> yep. knowing that I was supporting this great community. Right. I mean, I, I have to say that I honestly feel that there is no greater community than the kid lit community. Um, they are just, if you could just gather all the most awesome people in one room, it would really be the kidlit community. Um, they are only interested in the child. They are only interested in the best child that we can, we can support. And I think that everyone has such an incredibly big heart, um, that they're willing really to do anything as long as it's for the kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we write for the kids Mm -hmm. and that's who we are trying to reach. I mean, understandably, there's not everyone who has like, you know, the picture perfect mom and dad who are going to read their children a a story every night before bed. Um, I think for a lot of us, we're trying to reach the kids that that aren't getting that. Mm -hmm. And we just want them to know that we love them and that there's people out there that care. Yeah. Couple of questions before you go. First off, as a teacher, in that you, you, you mentioned something really important. Um, when I asked my wife and, and her best friend, who is a principal in the Boston systems, what can I do to inspire parents in your schools to read more with their kids? The answer that came back was, was, kind of eye opening and it was something I should have known. But, you know, they said, you know, a lot of our parents, can't read. All right. And a lot of the parents uh, who can read, they can't read English. And, um, and, and a lot of the parents who can't read, they're working three, literally they're working three jobs. And yeah. when they get yeah. home, they're yeah. exhausted. And that was the motivation for me to, re- to, to, to write Love That I Matter to You because I wrote that book for kids to read to their parents. And it's just all, right. all about I love that you listen to me when I read. I love that you help me cook. I love, you know, um, because I think it's important for, for parents to hear that too. But, but the parents who, who are on the edge and it's like, oh, yeah, I am really tired. I can either sit down and read to my kid or I can, um, watch TV or I can play a game on my Kindle. As a, as a teacher, what can you say to them to inspire them to make that extra effort? To, to sit down and spend 15 minutes reading with their kids? I think it's really important to acknowledge the fact that as parents, we really work hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've probably worked harder than any generation before us in the sense that, you know, we have dual 
working parents these days and there's not a mom to stay at home. So I think that sometimes something simple like just a picture walk, have Mm. your child pick their favorite picture book and just tell you what they think is going on through the pictures. It doesn't always have to be this very long, drawn out session where you're just exhausted. You know, sometimes all you want to do is go to bed. And you know your little one is going to ask for 50 million glasses of water mm-hmm. before the night is is done. So maybe just do a quick picture book uh, walk. Maybe a uh, you can even just read a page and just have your child decide like, oh, what do you think is going on in this page? Okay, tomorrow we're going to find out what the next step is. Um, something simple that takes a couple of minutes that maybe your child might, you know, remember for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. But it really isn't too much of a demand on an already demanding schedule for a parent. I mean, as a parent, I feel, I I really feel for parents Mm -hmm. that are, you know, working two jobs. You know, my husband works actually two jobs. And, you know, I work a a full-time job. So it's exhausting when... You know, your kid wants you to read five chapters from a book. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not always doable. And You bring up a really good point. And there's real value in sitting down and looking at a few pages of pictures in a book and asking your kid what they think about it. Because that in it, I, one of the things that I think is so valuable about reading with your kids is – Yes, they, they learn vocabulary. Yes, they learn empathy. They, they learn how to become better readers. But more than anything is they, they, they come to learn that you really value their opinion. When yeah. you're asking them what they think of the story and then you're, you're acknowledging that you're asking for their opinion. So when they give you their opinion, you go, it's, it's valid. It's their opinion. <laughs> They're honest yeah, with you. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. so important. I think you actually hit the nail on the head. The important thing for kids, honestly, isn't the vocabulary or isn't the amount of things you can find in a picture. Mm -hmm. The the value for children is that you're actually spending time with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes them feel valued. Mm -hmm. And that it really is what picture books are all about. It's not. The vocabulary, it's not the page turns, it's not the satisfying ending, it's the fact that the child suddenly feels, hey, you know what, my mom and dad care because they're reading with me. Mm -hmm. And that's a big deal because you are the most important person in your child's life. Correct. Yeah, and and when the most important person in your life takes the time to be with you and focus in on you, that's the best feeling in the world. It is. Absolutely. There's nothing that's going to top that. Yeah. No teacher, no curriculum in school, no principal, nothing. Nothing is going to make your child feel more valued than you taking time to spend time with your child. Well, I know your furry little child wants to spend some time with you. So before, <laughs> we don't want to keep you from the, from him or her uh, any longer than need, needed. So tell everybody where they can find out more about Noah Noah Source and where they can find out more about your awesome website. Oh, thank you, Jed. Um, you can buy Noah Noah Source anywhere books are sold. And if you're interested in writing picture books or middle grade or young adult, you can go to www.kidlit.com. 411, that's K-I-D-L-I-T 411.com, and you can also learn all about writing for kids. Awesome. We have been speaking tonight to the author of Noah Noah Source and also the driving force behind KidLit411.com, Elaine Kylie Kearns. Yay! Elaine, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you, Jed. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be joining us from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. She's our friend, Lydia Lukidis, is here to tell us about her brand new book, No Bears Allowed. She, th- This is really, I always love when Lydia is on the show. 
Hey, if you are the author of a great children's book and you would love to tell the world about that book, we would love to have you as a guest on the podcast. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you a chance to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. All you need to do is to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the contact button, let us know about your great book. My producer, Fashima, will let you know the next easy steps. It is, it is fun, easy, and it is a great way to celebrate your book with the world. We want to thank our guests today, Elaine, Kylie, Kearns. Make sure you check out Noah Noah Source. We also want to thank our friends at Familius Publishing. You know, one of their nine habits of happy family life is laughing together, and, and another one is playing together. They just published a book called The Big Book of Family Games by Brad Berger. Brad was on the show not too long ago. Check out his interview on our archives. You can find them on our website, readingwithyourkids.com, or wherever you find your podcast. We also want to thank Donna Sager Cowan. Make sure you check out her with The Courage of a Mouse, the first in the Superhero School series. I also want to thank my amazing producer, Fana Khan, my beautiful wife. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for helping to make the world a better place. You do that. Yes, you do. You do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>